That's not actually bad. <laughs> that sounded good. If they're gonna, I'm gonna put this in the video. And they're gonna be like, "That sound like crap." What's up, guys? My name is Miles, and my name is Fez, and this is the commodity, and this is the commodity, and today we are reacting to Geography Now, Indonesia, Indonesia. Indonesia. I call it Indonesia. He gets mad at me and tells it's me it's Indonesia. Indonesia, and I know it's Indonesia, but it's it like, could also be Indonesia. It's Indonesia. We've been asked to do this video by a few people on our last video that we uploaded, and so we figured, why not? Let's go ahead and throw this out there. So, you never know. Uh, in the description down below, if you guys wanna hop on uh, down there, we have a link to our Discord. If y'all wanna come on to our Discord, we've got over 200 people on our Discord right now, and we talk to them daily. We're having great conversations, making some new friends. Uh, you could possibly get shouted out on our channel. Yeah, you can get shouted out. Shouted out. Also in the description, we've got the link to our Patreon, which I'll also put right here. If you guys want to subscribe to that, we've got uh, we've got exclusive content, behind the scenes content, uh, and we talk with you guys also one on one. So it's one dollar a month. If you've got it, awesome. If you don't, we're just glad to see you here. Also in the description down below, we've got our PO box snacks snacks so if you want to send snacks or anything else like snacks or love letters love letters snacks or love letters and snacks money which you're not <laughs> supposed to send money but you can send me your credit cards it's whatever yeah or just snacks uh and then also if you guys like this video give us a thumbs up if you don't like this video give us a thumbs up and then Go ahead and subscribe. subscribe. Ring a ding that bell. We're trying to hit a whole bunch of subscribers to at a 15, certain point. Fifteen thousand by April twentieth. Be there or be square. Tattoo right here is what I'm gonna get. I'm and gonna get a another one. Yeah. Something. Whatever here's you guys tell me to tattoo, go in the Discord. We've got a tattoo for Miles. Uh, chat. You guys can tell me what you want me to get tattooed on my body for the rest of my life, and it can be so embarrassing. It doesn't matter. Just give me some suggestions in the Discord. Let's have fun with Let's it. Let's hop in. Let's Geography now, Indonesia. This guy's got a strong V-neck. Yeah, he does. Hey everybody, so if you don't know anything about Indonesia, basically all you have to know is that it's kind of like the Hawaii of the Muslim world, but it's like huge. It's like the biggest state and with orangutans. And that's it. Just he sounds like Donald Trump. Trump. It's huge. It's, it's huge. Song. It's huge. It's time to learn it's like the biggest. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. So as some of you know, I've been to Indonesia one time on one island for like three hours. I ate one dish. So basically, I'm like the Indonesia expert, right? Well, if not, I'm kind of like the only guy on YouTube doing full profile videos like this. So for now, you'll just have to kind of deal with me for like the next 12 or so minutes. Woohoo! Default! <laughs> All right, so again, if you don't know anything about Indonesia, it's basically like if the Middle East and South Asia had an incredibly colorful, loud, somewhat explosive set of babies, like thousands of them. Okay, that doesn't really help. First of all, Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago nation located right where the Indian Ocean meets the Pacific Ocean on the incredibly clustered set of islands making six countries known commonly as Nusantara or the Malay Archipelago. Indonesian Archipelago. Sure, whatever makes you happy. Indonesia actually has land borders with three of these countries, East Timor, Papua New Guinea, and Malaysia on the biggest island, Borneo or Kalimantan, which is one of the world's only two triple split nation islands, the other one being Cyprus. Although technically, if you include the UN buffer zone, it's kind of like four entities, but the UN isn't a country, whatever. Or just watch the Cyprus episode. The country is divided into 34 provinces, five of which have special administrative statuses, with the capital and most populous city, Jakarta, wow. located on Java, the world's most populous island with nearly half of the entire population of Indonesia in it. The largest cities after Jakarta are Surabaya and Bandung, both located on Java Island, and Medan, located on Sumatra. Jakarta, Soekarno, Hatta International, Bali's Mura Rai International in Despansar, and Surabaya's Juanda International. Now, here's where things get a little a speculative. Today, there are still arguments claimed as to exactly how many Real. islands Indonesia we have two. I thought he said National five. Coordinating Agency I thought for Surveying said, and just Mapping three. Oh, I might have been wrong. About 13,500. The National Institute like, we have of Aeronautics and Space <laughs> Agency says that it has about 18,300, whereas the Indonesian government claims about 17,500. But wherever the point is, there's a lot of them. Over 8,800 have names, and over 900 of them are permanently inhabited. You would think they are the country with the most islands, but surprisingly, Finland and Canada beat them. But a lot of their islands are kind of like <laughs> little islands in the lakes. So does it really count? Mm, I guess. Now let's 
let's talk about the five special administrative provinces. They are Aceh, Yogyakarta, West Papua and Papua, and the capital Jakarta. Now, no surprise, the capital Jakarta acts as its own political entity. Lots of countries do that. But what about the others? First, Aceh. Aceh is kind of like the black sheep of Indonesia. Aceh. It's the only province in which Sharia law Spanish. is fully implemented. Also, they kind of have like a ton of oil. So yeah, they've kind of asserted a very independent ideology that sets them apart as autonomous from the rest of Indonesia. Then you have Yogyakarta, which is the only that region that is still... That looks like it's straight out of the Mortal Kombat movie, the original one. Yes, it does. I wonder if that's where they filmed the original Mortal Kombat. It looks identical to that. <laughs> if you know if this was where the Mortal Kombat movie was filmed. Or if this is what it was based off of. I think this is where that looks identical. I don't know why it triggered something in my brain. Governed by a pre-colonial monarchy, the Sultan of Yogyakarta, who acts as a hereditary governor. Otherwise, we get the two Papuas, which collectively used to be the province called Irian Jaya, but then in 2003 they got split into two. Basically, this is the place that has the least in common with the rest of Indonesia. It has a pissed. culture and background yeah, closer does. to their cousins across the border in Papua New Guinea. So then, why is this part of Indonesia? Well, long story short, Indonesia was basically like, well, now that we have our full sovereignty, we get everything that the Dutch colonized, but the people of Papua were not too happy. So then Indonesia was like, all right, we'll give you a vote to stay or leave however we would strongly implore you to make the right decision so they voted to stay in a lot of people complained there's still some current opposition and to this day the area has a relatively high level of autonomy and the government kind of just leaves them alone except for when it comes to mining for resources oh in the south maluku <laughs> area also kind of has like an independence dispute thing kind of going on but the major opponents to the indonesian government are primarily based in the netherlands then you have the strange riau islands which look like they should belong to malaysia but they don't even though they have a strong malay derived culture and you have the ambalat sea block which has a ton of oil that both they and Malaysia argue over. So that essentially covers most of the administrative divisions of Indonesia. Some of the most notable spots. I do want to know for a lot of these countries that are kind of wanting to be kind of autonomous, but yet are still part of Indonesia. Is it the government that's like that? Or is it the people as well? Do the people feel prideful where they want to be separate? Or is it kind of like, we're cool with either one, just we don't care. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure some people are that way. Some people aren't, but I'm curious what the majority is. Lots of interest in Indonesia might include the National Monument and Museum, Royal Keraton Nayogya Karta Palace, Ratu Boko, the Magalang and Chicken Shaped Churches, Borobudur, disputed to be the largest Buddhist temple in the world, that is so insane. Palace, yeah. the Taman Sari Underground Mosque, the Equator Monument, the Pura Ulun Danu Bratan Lake Temples. That's beautiful. I'm trying to say that five times fast. Pura Ulun Danu the, the Bratan Lake. The Millennium Bridge, the Sacred Monkey Temple, the Hellmouth or Elephant Cave, the Seven Story Pagoda of Cebu, the Smoked Mummy Villages of Aikim and Jiwika in Papua. I Go to Overlays, Indonesia. Just go to the yeah, Taman I definitely do too. Indonesia Park, which kind of has like a bunch of replicas of all the famed sites in Indonesia. Oh, and keep in mind, there's Dutch colonial style buildings all over. Too many ancient temples and pagodas to list. And no matter how many buildings and landmarks are built, they will never compare to what Mother Nature has done. Which brings us to. Indonesia's land is like that one ex we all had back in our 20s that we trusted a stupid friend to hook us up with. Super attractive, but almost killed you a few times. Indonesia <laughs> lies on what is labeled as the prehistoric continental shelf known as Sundaland, which during the Ice Age times pretty much connected all of the islands together before the Wallace Line until the ice melted and filled in the gaps. Now this is where things get incredibly messed up. Not only is Indonesia right in the worst part of the Ring of Fire, but the country is basically smashed between three converging major continental plates. The Eurasian, the Pacific, and the Australian plates, with dozens of minor plates and rifts like the Sunda, Timor, Banda, Moluka, and so on. This in return gives Indonesia over 400 volcanoes, disputably more than any chill. in the world, with over 150 active ones, making it the most yeah. volcanically active country in the world as well. This means on a daily visit? basis, Indonesia <laughs> experiences on average about four earthquakes. I do. Our luck, we would go to Indonesia and the whole continent would explode. Pompeii all over again. <laughs> Day, ranging anywhere between the small timid three to a noticeable six on the Richter scale and you never know where or when they will happen hmm. Impressive. Nonetheless, volcanoes can be a good thing, especially when concentrated close to the equator as the warmer, humid climate allows moisture and minerals to coalesce, creating some of the most fertile land on the planet. This is why places like Hawaii and Iceland are so radically different despite both being volcanic islands. In the end, Indonesia got mm. blessed with a flourishing abundance of flora and fauna, the second highest concentration in the world after Brazil, many of which being endemic species like the Raflesia arnoldi and the Titan arum, the largest flowers in the world which each smell like rotting corpses. And at over 180, they also have the highest concentration of mammals out of anywhere in the world. Nonetheless, the national animal is actually a reptile, the largest in the world at three meters long, That's the famous awesome. Komodo yeah. dragon, which Till you can find on Komodo yeah. Island, which is where they get their name from, and they can kill people. 
Just a heads up. And the surprisingly not <laughs> national animal, even though everybody knows and loves them, the only great ape in Asia, orangutans, are only found on this archipelago as well. By the way, they look docile and quiet, but orangutans can rip off your arm if you anger them. Yeah. So don't. Otherwise, I've they'll... seen Planet of the Apes. Snuggly. <laughs> The largest mountain, Pungkak Jaya, is located in the east cheeks. in Papua. The longest river, the Kapuas, flows on Kalimantan, or Borneo Island, starting in the east, emptying into the South China Sea. The largest lake, as well as the largest volcanic lake in the world, Lake Toba, can be found on Sumatra. This is also the site of the largest speculated volcanic explosive eruption on Earth that essentially created a worldwide volcanic winter. The eruption was so big that you can That's literally crazy. observe ashes from the explosion that went as far as Malawi in East Africa. Remember, guys, Mother Nature is beautiful, but if she wants, she can kill you. Close the Pungkak Jai is Grasberg, the largest gold and copper mine in the world. And on Mount Ijen on Java, which spews out blue lava, all over you can find intrepid sulfur miners that literally go into the base of the volcanic craters, risking health just to get raw sulfur ores. Otherwise, you have other anomalies like the Not Sidorajo right. mud no. volcanoes, well, I mean, the three colored probably, lake yeah. Kelimutu in Flores, and the Kakaban wow. Island jellyfish. Too water many was? strange places. To this day, Indonesia is the yes. number one producer of palm oil, cloves, was, cinnamon, like... nutmeg, coconut, and vanilla. Some national dishes might include things like rendang. Satay or satay, gado gado, lontong, ketupat, papeda, ikan bakar, pempek, tumpeng, lemang, and the national dish nasi goreng, which basically just means fried rice, which has no exact recipe. You can mix it up and kind of do whatever you want to it. Oh, and keep in mind, Malaysia might argue that some of these dishes belong to them, but that's a whole other story tied in with history and culture. I, I think argue we, all you want in the comments i think we have a couple of uh malaysian viewers on our channel so. yeah so if you guys want to <laughs> argue back and forth in the comments be our guest keep it clean we love both of y'all <laughs> eh, we got time why not talk about it now, there's a lot of curious mysteries when it comes to Indonesia's people. Like, how did they become predominantly Muslim? Or what's the whole deal with them in Malaysia? Or wait, this guy is considered an Indonesian? What? First of all, the country has about 263 million people, making it the fourth most populous country in the world with the largest population of Muslims I didn't as know well. that. Now, here's I the thing. In a sense, yes, 95% of the population that's is considered us. native yeah. Indonesian. But that's an incredibly broad term, considering that Indonesia has about 300 different ethno-linguistic groups split up across all the island regions of the country. If you look at a map with the actual ethnic group break, down, it kind of looks something like this. Nonetheless, the two largest parent <laughs> ethnic groups are the Javanese that make up about 40%, the Sundanese that make up about 15%. Otherwise, the rest of the population is primarily made up of smaller groups and tribes that have only around 2 to 3% each, like the Batak, the Sulawesi, the Balinese, Minangkabau, Betawi, Papuan, Dayak, and so on. Finally, about 5% are non-indigenous Indonesians like Chinese, Arabs, Indians, and even a few Europeans. They this is how stupid I am. I had never heard of any of those besides the the smallest portion. Yeah, of the beside the the last five percent that he just said. Exactly. Like, how uncultured am I? Yeah. Like, what a loser. You are a loser. Thank you. I didn't know either. We're losers. We're both losers. You're a bigger one though. Like, you're physically bigger than me. You're. I'm taller. You're still rounder. <laughs> what size pants do you wear? That's what I thought. They also use the Indonesian rupiah as their currency. Down, they say, use the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. And here's where things get a little side. confusing: culture and language. The one thing that kind of unites all Indonesians is that they share the national language Bahasa Indonesia, which means. You know what I just thought about? Hmm. Everybody drives on the left side of the road, just in different directions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we drive on the right side too. So do y'all. We're all on the left side. <laughs> Everybody's left and right side, just not necessarily in the same direction. Yeah. Indonesian language. However, Bahasa Indonesia is actually kind of like a lingua franca to many of the people as Indonesia is the world's largest trilingual country. In addition to Bahasa Indonesia, most people speak their own mother tongue as well as English. Yep, English. They caught on quick when they realized it was the money language. The funny thing is, even though the Javanese make up the largest people group, the Javanese language is not an official language. Technically, it could have been, but then that would have favored one people group over all the others, which would have caused tension. So they kind of had to choose like a neutral default. Plus, Javanese is like really hard to learn and the original writing system, although very beautiful, is incredibly difficult to write. Nonetheless, at nearly 100 million speakers, this makes Javanese the largest non-official minority language in the world. And that's why the Bahasa Indonesia language is so strange. It's not even technically indigenous to Indonesia, but more Malay-derived. To this day, people who speak Bahasa Indonesia can understand somewhere around 60 to 70 percent of what their neighbors are saying in Malaysia. The biggest difference, though, would be the loan words, as Indonesia took quite a bit of influence from the Dutch back in colonial times. For example, kantor versus kantor, doctor versus doctor mantel mantel oma opa <laughs> vorto 
Wartel. Speaking of the Dutch, quick history lesson. Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic kingdoms. The Portuguese come in quickly, but then the Dutch flock in. Japan comes in for a couple of years and decimates a huge chunk of the population. Independence, Republic, the Suharto years. Controversial incidents and fights with ethnic Chinese, Timorese, and Papuan peoples. Suharto Falls, Reformation period begins, and here we are today. In Indonesia, all citizens are required to register under one of six recognized religion categories. Islam, Protestant, Catholic. Looks like they forgot to finish the spelling of passport. Yeah. <laughs> passport. passport uh, you know, we'll get to it later. <laughs> so stupid. Catholic, Hindu, Buddhist, and Confucianism. If you don't identify with either, then sorry. Prior to Islam entering around the 13th century, Indonesia was actually primarily that Hindu is and so Buddhist. Cool. It's disputed yeah. on how exactly Indonesia became prevalently Muslim. Some people will say that it's because of the Arab traders that came by in the early first millennium. Others will say that maybe it had to do with the Malacca Sultanate conquest that fought against the Hindu and Buddhist kingdoms. And the truth is, both might be right. Inevitably, Bali became like the last sort of haven for whatever Hindus were left. The eastern Nusa Tenggara region and the Papuas remained predominantly Christian as the Dutch and Portuguese shared the gospel. Islamic culture in Indonesia is a little different from what it looks like in the Middle East. For one, most mosques don't have the typical dome structure, and actually many of them resemble Hindu temples, like the Damak Great Mosque. When a family member dies, their relatives might often come together and pray for a whole week, and then again on the 40th day, and then on the year anniversary, and then on the 500th day, and so on. Also I wonder if it's like repurposed mosques mm -hmm. is what they're using, because I was in London, and a lot of the Baptist churches looked very Catholic, and I believe, and I think... I could be wrong because they had a lot of the Catholic symbols, uh, yeah. symbols word I'm looking for, but I can't think of it uh, at Baptist churches. I was like, those are so unique. And I had, so my dad is got his PhD in theology and religion and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know. He seems to know a lot about everything <laughs> and you know, it's just, I guess a lot of this stuff, if it's, not being used it can be repurposed because right. i think most religious figures wouldn't be like oh you're worshiping me in the wrong building <laughs> ah i think most of them are just like I i'm just glad that you're taking time to exactly to pray to me or speak to me or whatever but those buddhist temples i like i love architecture i think most people can respect architecture no matter what form it's in and it's crazy how different parts of the world like had their own style. I mean, obviously they didn't know each other, but had their right. own different styles of architecture and they're all so different. And then when they're like, these aren't super, like this isn't far from Malaysia, but the, the architecture, it couldn't be more different. Right. It's so insane. Like I, I, I love it. And that's like one of the, it's nothing that I truly am passionate about. Like I'm not going to sit there and, you know, do a whole bunch of like, research and all that kind of stuff but i i it's absolutely beautiful. love to go look at it i want to go to these temples just so i can take pictures yeah. and just kind of go there and show the respect that it deserves i right. mean they're just amazing like same for the, the buddhist temples the uh islamic temple i don't know what they call them honestly but the the places where a lot of these religions and take the pyramids place. and things like that like yeah i mean it's just it's so amazing mm. I, I i respect it all also, the night before Eid al-Fatir, the youth might gather and go around neighborhoods reciting the takbir. Those are some things you don't really typically find in the Middle East. Clothing modesty customs are pretty loose. Not all Muslim women wear hijabs. However, the ones that do might also complement it with Western clothing, like branded t-shirts with skin-tight sleeves and jeans. When I was in Indonesia, I saw a hijab-wearing woman with short sleeves and capri pants exposing her calves. I was like, can they do that? <laughs> now, in terms of culture, again, it depends on where you are, and many indigenous people still follow ancient traditions. Everything from the Minangkabau candle dance Ooh, to the gamelan like players that. of Yogyakarta, so Wayang Javanese shadow puppetry, Balinese festivals, Sumatran like Pencaxilat martial art tournaments, Thanks. Kenya motif paintings of the Kalimantan tribes, the deadly Pasola game played by Sumba peoples, Karabeng cow racing on Madura Island, the strange burial traditions of the Toraja people, and everywhere you can find those pointy longhouses. Otherwise, some notable people of Indonesian descent might include people like the first president, Sukarno, Gada Maja, R.A. Kartini, B.J. Habibi, Iko Uwai, Yaya Nuruhiyan, Sesep Arif Rahman, Agnes Monica, Iwan Faz, Angun, Megawati Sukarno Putri, the Hartono brothers, and YouTubers Brian Emanuel and Raditya Dika. Now, it's so hard to cover Indonesia's culture because there's so many different people groups, each with their own cultures. It's insanely colorful and rich. I wish we could cover more, but we got to move on to some diplomatics, shall we? 
Okay, so Indonesia is basically like the kingpin of Southeast Asia with the largest population and economy as well as being a member of the G20. Therefore, they know how to manage relations. First of all, the rest of the Muslim nations in the Middle East generally get along with Indonesia as they see them as kind of like their strange Asian cousins. Indonesians make up the largest group of pilgrims for the Hajj in Mecca. However, there has been some controversy with Saudi Arabia in regards to migrant worker abuse and death sentences. Since then, Indonesia dramatically decreased its expat programs. The US, the Netherlands, and Australia are kind of like their biggest non-Asian supporters. In addition to trade and business, the U.S. played a huge role in Indonesia's independence, and they worked closely during Cold War times. The Netherlands... You're welcome. Thank you. We have nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what not? Just, yeah. <laughs> don't take that serious. <laughs> Please don't. I I'm very prideful of my country, but the crap that we've done at the same time, we're just happy that you're... As long as y'all are happy, we're happy. Yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> still holds close ties to Indonesia despite post-colonial bitterness. Plus, tons of Indonesians live in the Netherlands. To this day, they have the second largest population of Indonesians outside of Indonesia no, after Malaysia okay. at nearly 2 million. Australia gives some of the most aid to Indonesia, especially after catastrophe incidents. And even though there are some controversies involving immigration and attacks on Australians abroad, they still share close ties generally. Now, Indonesia and Malaysia are kind of like the Colombia and Venezuela of Southeast Asia. They're like the twins separated at birth and have a strange love-hate relationship. Malays accuse Indonesians of stealing their culture and language. Indonesians accuse them of not being grateful for all their help during war times. But when they actually meet up as people, it's like they're totally brothers. Nonetheless, most Indonesians I talk to... And it sounds... Uh, all honesty, the it sounds on like... The cake? Yeah. We were like... <laughs> this is more like Malaysia. Uh, I googled pandan cake and it said that it was um, uh, uh, from Singapore. Or I'm sorry, from Indonesia. Check out the video. It's going to be all the way up there where... You can't see it. Check it out at the end of this video. Yeah, uh, great video. But yeah, great it, cake. It said it was Indonesia, and I posted it, and then we got a lot of comments from our Malaysian fans saying, our friends saying, ah, that's a Malaysian cake, and then we had some Indonesian viewers saying that's an Indonesian cake. Yeah, so, so, you know, go at it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of have the same thing here with Canadian stuff and yeah. Mexican stuff. That's why we kind of just have Tex-Mex and crappy Canadian food. Yeah. Who have said Japan is probably their best friend, which is funny. <laughs> Sorry, Canadian Japan viewers. Kind of really things up that one person. <laughs> Nonetheless, they've moved on, and today Japan makes up the largest export partner. Tourists flock in year-round, and the two have been building each other up for over half a century. In conclusion, Indonesia's people are very much like their islands, numerous with lush, colorful, strange diversity. Sometimes a cyclone, earthquake, or volcano of controversy erupts, but at the end of the day, they still flourish together as one. Stay tuned. Iran is coming up next. We will put this video in the links down below. Definitely go check them out because their videos are extremely informative. We know that we didn't have a whole lot of uh, interrupting this and really talking about it because it was highly educational. It was very, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a whole lot in that. A lot I, that I won't remember and I'm gonna have to rewatch it. Yeah, and I didn't realize, I, I realize how stupid I am. But these kind of things I love learning about because I really am interested in Asian and Eastern culture. Because all honesty, I do want to go and visit other parts of this world. Right. Other than, I love you, Malaysia, but other than Malaysia. Malaysia is going to be the first stop. It's 100% the first stop. In Indonesia, we, you're right there. We might hit Indonesia. You might be our next stop. Right after. We definitely want to venture to Southeast Asia. Yeah. That's like one of our main things. Because there's so much information on Eastern Asia and, of course, the central part of the country. There's so much information. But in Southeast, there's not... And there's not enough love here in the U.S. for it. Yeah, exactly. And we want to show that and we want to visit it and we want to kind of uh, that be our foundation of this channel. That, that's what we've discovered because that's not what it initially was for. We're not going to sit here and lie to you. Yeah, initially it was car United news. States car news. Yeah. Pretty much. But and I love how it's evolved and it's quickly changing and it is going to keep on changing the second we can travel. It is going to turn into traveling and culture visiting channel. and culture. So, guys, if you have any other Indonesian videos that you want us to react to, let us know down in the comments or preferably, again, down in the description. Go to our Discord. Uh, we have a, a special spot for you to put suggestion videos. Also, I kind of want to do an Australian video. 
I something like that people that. would be interested in watching. So if you guys have anything that you'd be interested in seeing about Australia, let us know in the comments or in the Discord. Yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, my name is Miles. And my name is Fez. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Out.